Hi, it's Alaska Granny. The facts are in. The price of food just in 2022 has gone up over 10%. I know I'm always looking for ideas and suggestions on how to save money on food because our budgets are getting tighter. Prices are going up, but our incomes aren't going up for most of us. So I'm always looking for new ways, new ideas of how to save money on food. I thought I would share with you some of my top ideas on how you can save money on food because it's getting harder and harder to keep that prepper pantry full. The first thing you want to do is actually shop with a list. Figure out what you're going to make. Look through your pantry and see what foods you have that maybe you need to rotate and then make a list from that. But then shop for sales, watch for sales. If you see a sale when you're at the store, hopefully you have a little bit of money put aside in your budget that you can add those things. If you get to the store and the foods that you want aren't available, be ready and willing with ideas of what you could get instead. Because it can be harder to afford and even sometimes find the foods that we choose. Cook at home. It's great fun to go out to eat, but food cooked at home costs about one third of what the price is of a restaurant meal. The restaurants have to not only buy the groceries just like you did, but they have to pay for the building, they have to pay for the utilities, the taxes, the staff, and then they also need to be able to make a profit. So while it's fun and nice, perhaps you can even figure out what are the favorite meals that you like to go out to eat and learn how to make some of those at home. Have in your budget money set aside for entertainment and special occasions, special nights out, and then it's perfectly fine to go out to a restaurant and treat yourself every once in a while. But it doesn't need to be something that we do because I don't know what I'm going to make for dinner. So that's where you need to have a plan for what you want to make and have shop for some of that food ahead of time. Try to avoid the pre-packaged foods the best that you can. Yes, they're wonderful to have for emergencies and grab-and-go meals, things like that, but don't make it something that you rely on on an everyday basis. You want to try to cook with the basic foods. Go up and down the produce aisles. Look for the basic foods like beans, rice, pasta, oatmeal, the foods that we can make into bigger, better, fuller meals. Think about basics like peanut butter, eggs, bread. You can make a wide variety of meals out of just a few basic foods. Compare prices at different stores. One of my friends that lives in the lower 48 recently told me that the Walmart in their area, the prices have become more expensive than shopping at Fred Meyers, which is part of like Kroger. She was flabbergasted by the increase of prices in the Walmart. So don't just assume that one store is the least expensive. It, it doesn't just mean that you need to only buy the things on sale at other stores, but if you occasionally go through the stores and see what the prices are, it can help you know if you really are getting the best price or not. You can look at the ads, even look them up online before you head out. Then you'll know if you're getting the best deal for the amount of money that you have. But remember, if you spend all of your time going from store to store to store to store, you not only are wasting a lot of time, you're also wasting all that gas that it takes to get to all those stores. So sometimes finding the store that is the least expensive for the most things that you want is a better suggestion, it's a better solution than just going all around trying to get, you know, the lowest price on a box of Jello at one store and milk at another store. Sometimes all of that extra time and the gasoline it costs you to get there is not worth the amount of money that you might have saved. Swap out some of the pricey proteins. If you want some meat and you can't afford the cut you want, check through and see if there are other types that could uh, be cut up or substituted, something that you could use to make the recipe that you want or the meal idea that you have, but it isn't going to be quite as expensive. Yes, it's great to be able to enjoy steak, but sometimes we need to have ground beef, we need to have chicken, canned fish. Look for choices, different opportunities, and there are lots of things that you can add in as meal stretchers. You can add oatmeal into meatloaf. You can add lentils into ground beef dishes. You can serve meals with noodles, with pasta or macaroni, over mashed potatoes, stir in extra vegetables, or serve them with rice. And there are, uh, so those are ideas of how you can have the meals that you want, but stretch them a little more 
so that you can get more food for not as much money and then you can still have the, mostly the flavors that you enjoy. I'm sure you've all heard most of your life to buy generic, but sometimes we have our ideas that the one brand, there might be a few brands of foods that you really enjoy more than some of the generic ones. And so if you really think there's a huge difference and it's worth the extra price to you, then go ahead and keep that on your list if it's something you can afford. I only want one kind of ketchup and I'm just not having the generic. Lots of people are happy with it, but I'm not. I'm fussy about my ketchup. But almost everything else, I'm willing to find it generic. Lots of times the generic is even the same. They'll, for example, produce, fruits and vegetables. If you go in the cannery, they're putting through the name brand with the label. And then they just bring out cans with a new label and they continue to process the same foods. So try checking it out. Compare them if you want to. Find the best deals that you can so that you can stretch your uh, food dollars as far as possible. Try to skip the canned and bottled beverages. Yeah, it's great to have sports drinks and sodas, but if we substitute some of that for water that we can just get out of the tap at home, you can save a lot of money that way. You don't need to be serving sodas and sports drinks and power drinks and all of those kinds of different sorts of beverages. It's nice to have them, a few of them, but we don't need to count on having them every day. Our society has become almost spoiled that we think we need special things every day. And if you have something special every single day, how is it special anymore? How do you treat yourself? So you want to have things that you can look forward to. I remember when my son was in high school and he and a few of his friends started a lawn and garden service and they had different customers. They would all go together in their pickup truck and they would all work and serve, uh, clean up somebody's yard. Then the kids wanted to stop at the little convenience store on the way home after they were working and the, the kids said to me one day, he, your son never buys the slushies. We buy the slushies and he just drinks water. And then they realized at the end of the summer, he still had all of his money left and they had spent theirs, frittered it away. And so the savings that went into his college account was far greater than his friends who had enjoyed the little frozen drinks all summer long. Food and drinks are essential to our survival. So make sure that you're keeping track of the food that you have in your pantry, that you're rotating that food and then replacing it. You want to use it, rotate, the older food, add more food in the back, and continue to grow your stockpile so that you'll have the food that you need no matter what the day brings. We have had long stretches of time here in Alaska where you can't get out because the snow is just too deep. So it doesn't matter if you have the things you need at home. You can stay home for a week, two weeks, because you have plenty of food on hand. So we just never know what can happen. Maybe somebody will get sick. Maybe we'll have a uh, job loss, we'll have something, economic catastrophe, a big huge bill come in, and then you don't have the money to go to the store that week, or you don't have the capability to make it to the store. You'll be able to still go into your pantry and choose some simple foods to put together and continue to feed yourself and your family. And that helps you get through any difficulties, hard times, any challenges. And if you can just take care of your basic needs when challenges come your way, you're going to be far better off because it gives you the mindset that you don't have to worry about what can I eat today. You have still room left in your mind to problem solve. What can I do to make this situation better? And so being prepared helps us to get through the little challenges and the big ones. We've had lots of challenges lately and I'm afraid there's going to be a lot more in the future but the better we prepare, the better we'll be able to handle it and we can continue to make every day of our lives the best that it can be. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.